So, goodness of fit measure. Suppose this is your x and this is your y and this is basically your y bar and this is the line that you have fitted. This is the S R F which is y i equals to alpha hat plus beta hat x i. Now, you take any value of x, let us say this is your x value. So, obviously, you will get an observed y that is called y i, this is x i, right, observed. So, that means, and your line says this should be your predicted consumption, which let us say that I am denoting by y i hat. Okay. So, that means, what is this y i minus y bar? This is called y i minus y bar. Now, if you recall what I said just before, uh, uh, sometimes back that the entire purpose of econometric analysis is to explain the variation in y and what is the variation in y? That is y i minus y bar around its mean value that is the variation. If you take summation and square it up, then it is known as total sum of square, I will write here. So, summation y i minus y bar whole square i running from 1 to n is called total sum of square sum of square or T S S. Now, out of this total variation in y, which is given by summation y i minus y bar whole square, how much your model is able to explain? Your model is able to explain only this part y i hat minus y bar. Okay? So, y i hat minus y bar and how will you denote that? This is y i hat minus y bar this much you have explained and let us again take the summation and square it up. Okay? So, that means summation y i hat minus y bar whole square i running from 1 to n is actually called explain sum of square because that is what you have explained. Explained sum of square or ESS explain sum of square or ESS. And what is pending, what is remaining that you are not able to explain is here sorry this is called TSS and this is called y i hat minus y bar again you take square and that is called summation y i hat minus y bar that much you have explained i running from 1 to n that is called explain sum of square, explain sum of square or ESS. And then this is the portion that you are not able to explain that is called y i minus y i hat. Okay, y i minus y i hat and take square. That is the portion that you are not able to explain. So, this is called y i minus y i sorry, uh, 
y i hat square and i running from 1 to n, then this is called residual sum of square. So, that means this much you are not able to explain residual sum of square or RSS. All right. So, that means from this we got TSS, we got ESS, we got RSS and the diagram easily shows the TSS this entire portion y i minus y bar is actually a summation of two, two component. So, from the diagram I can easily write the T s s equals to E s s plus R s s. This is one important relationship T s s equals to E s s plus R s s. Now, another concept our major focus was goodness of fit. Let us now define goodness of fit. Our total variation was summation y i minus y bar whole square. Out of this total variation, how much I am able to explain y i hat minus y bar. Now, if I take a percentage of total variation in y i that is explained by the model which is y i hat minus y bar, a proportion of this with respect to the total variation, a proportion of ESS with respect to total sum of square TSS is actually the goodness of it. Okay? More is the ESS, better is your. That means what I am saying, let us take a proportion ESS by TSS. Out of total variation, how much your model is going to explain? this proportion is known as r square or goodness of fit measure okay r square or goodness of fit measure that means r square basically says so if the r square is let's say 0 0.5090 in our example what does it mean it means it means 50 50.90 percentage of total variation in y i in consumption is actually explained by your model. That is the meaning of R square. That means, ESS by TSS ratio is 0 0.5090. That you have to understand. The ratio of ESS and TSS out of the total variation in y i which is y i minus y bar whole square how much your model is exp going to explain that proportion is known as r square. It means that my model is going to explain 50.90 percentage of total variation in y i around its mean value. Okay? So, now we have learned the three sum of square TSS, ESS and RSS. And we will now go back to Stata and we will see how Stata has reported those. Now see, look at here, they are source, they are, this table, this particular table, this particular table, here you see the R square, R sorry, R square is not 0 0.5090, I have written wrong. This R square is what is the value? R square is actually 0.9621. Point zero point nine six two one. So that means ninety six point two one percent variation in Y is actually explained by your model, which is really good. Which is really good. R square point nine six two one. And you have to keep in mind that R square R square lies between this is the limit. So, when R square is actually 1, so that means we can write these two cases, these two cases. Case 1, let us say R square equals to 1. That means, your y i hat is actually your y i. So, this point is actually Whatever your model predicted 
and whatever your actual y that is same. So that means your model can perfectly predict someone consumption. That is a theoretical possibility. So it is not possible to estimate a model for which yi hat equals to yi. Your prediction and observe there is no deviation. It is a theoretical possibility. So when r square equals to 1 means this is the meaning yi hat equals to yi. Similarly, what does then r square equals to 0 mean? When r square equals to 0 that means your model is not is not able to explain anything. Now, you in, in terms of the diagram, in terms of the diagram, that means there is no explain, there is no explain sum of square, you are not able to explain anything, that is why it is 0. So, obviously, your line will then tend towards downwards and it will converge to the average line. So, that means your yi hat is actually your y bar. So, that means this regression line will, will tend downward and it will converge to the average line. So, that means the average value of yi is the best prediction for this model. Since I do not have any, my explanatory variable does not have any explanatory power. Anyway, these are the two extreme possible cases, theoretical possibility. In reality, we do not get r square equal to 0 or 1 rather r square will always lie between 0 and 1. Now, here what you do, now this table, if you look at this table, this table where they have mentioned source and then there are two model residual and total and then, then you see this particular table is called ANOVA table. What is it called? ANOVA. ANOVA means analysis of variance. So, ANOVA table, this TSS, ESS and RSS what stata is giving, this is called ANOVA table, A N O V A, this is called analysis of variance. Analysis of variance, see this diagram is also a diagrammatic representation of ANOVA only. This is my total sum of square, total variation in y. Out of this, I am able to explain this. That is why this is called my, uh, this is, this is called my ESS and this is my, this is called RSS and this is TSS. So, this diagram also shows the analysis of variance only or ANOVA. Now, what is ESS here? the term what we have written ESS, in status language it is called model sum of square. So, ESS in stata is known as model sum of square, that is why stata has given, look this is model. So, your model is able to explain how much and the ESS model sum of explain sum of square value is 8552.77. Eight thousand five hundred fifty-two point seven seven is the model sum of square, and what is the residual sum of square? Residual sum of square is thirty-three point two seven, and if you add these two, then the total sum of square is eight thousand eight hundred and ninety. Eight thousand eight hundred and ninety. So this is called analysis of variance, which we have understood using the simple diagram, right, simple diagram. Then they have also given degrees of freedom, degrees of freedom. Now, degrees of freedom is something, how do you, how do you know the degrees of freedom? For any particular measure, for example, let us say I am trying to understand the degrees of freedom for this summation y i minus y bar whole square i running from 1 to n. I am trying to understand the degrees of freedom here and how do you define degrees of freedom? Number of 
नंबर ऑफ रेस्ट्रिक्शन इंपोज ओके सॉरी आई विल राइट टोटल नंबर ऑफ ऑब्जर्वेशन टोटल नंबर टोटल नंबर ऑफ ऑब्जर्वेशन ऑब्जर्वेशन माइनस नंबर ऑफ लीनियर रेस्ट्रिक्शन दैट इज हाउ द डिग्रीज ऑफ फ्रीडम कॉन्सेप्ट इज डिफाइंड see here what is my total number of observation look it is i running from 1 to n that means i have n number of observation and out of n number of observation how, how many restriction i have put i have given only one restriction in terms of y bar then degrees of freedom degrees of freedom for this is defined as n minus 1 why this is so that means one observation is lost due to the restriction imposed that is why n minus 1 number of observations are able to move freely to define this particular measure that is the concept of degrees of freedom what is the degrees of freedom for a particular measure is defined as total number of observations total number of observations minus number of linear restriction here total number of observation is n and number of restriction is 1 that is why it is degrees of freedom is n minus 1 okay similarly if you try to understand the degrees of freedom for tss sorry degrees of freedom for rss for rss now rss how we have defined it is defined as y i minus y i hat whole square i running from 1 to n that means from here what i can understand that to compute that means to compute rss it is necessary to compute why i hat and to compute why i hat compute why i hat we need to compute alpha hat and beta hat right that means if you have n number of total observations while estimating alpha hat and beta hat you will lose two observation and that is why degrees of freedom for rss would be degrees of freedom for rss would be n minus 2 where 2 is the total number of parameters to be estimated now in this model you have only two parameters that means when you have only one explanatory variable you have two parameters to be estimated for a generalized model let's say i am doing yi equals to alpha plus beta 1 x1 i plus beta 2 x2 i plus dot 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 beta k x k i plus u i here i am trying to estimate actually k number of parameters okay so that is the reason i would say that when you have k number of parameters then degrees of freedom for rss would be in minus k for a generalized model okay all right so that means n minus k is the degrees of freedom 
then what should be the degrees of freedom for ESS? Degrees of freedom for ESS would be df for TSS minus df for RSS, right. So, that means in this case in a two variable model it would be n minus 1 minus n minus 2. So, that means 1. This is how you can calculate the degrees of freedom and for a general model then it would become n minus 1. So, this would become n minus 1 minus n minus k. So, it would become k degrees of freedom for TSS. Right? Now, you see in stata total number of observation is 10 that is why degrees of freedom for TSS total sum of square is n minus 1 9 and what is the degrees of freedom for RSS since I have only one only one explanatory variable that means two parameters I am estimating. So, 10 minus 2 which is 8 and 9 minus 8 equals to 1 that is why it is called that is how we can calculate the degrees of freedom for TSS, RSS and ESS. So, first we will calculate the degrees of freedom for TSS which is always in minus 1 and the degrees of freedom for RSS is actually in minus k for the generalized model and in this case it is in minus 2. Once you know the degrees of freedom for TSS, degrees of freedom for RSS, just take the difference between these two, you will get the degrees of freedom for your ESS model sum of square. And then the data has also defined that ms mean sum of square which is nothing but the ss divided by e degrees of freedom. So, if you divide this 8550.72 divided by 1 is this. Similarly, if you divide this by 8 it will come 42.15. So, it is simply ss by its degrees of freedom. And if you take the ratio of these two ms then that will lead to another important statistic which is called F statistic. Okay. MS of model, MS of residual if you take then that will give you a statistic which is called F and that value will turn out to be 202. What is the implication of that F statistic? That we will discuss later once you understand the hypothesis testing. Right? So, with this we are just closing our discussion on today. So, today we discussed about the meaning of regression, what are the three important properties of beta hat that we estimate, then we have also learned how to estimate the model, how to con interpret the coefficient and then we have also learned the goodness of fit measure and using a simple diagram we understand the analysis of variance, three important uh, components that is there in the analysis of variance total sum of square which you are going to explain through your model defined as sum of y i minus y bar whole square and then the other two components is explain sum of square and in stata it is actually model sum of square and then the residual sum of square. Okay? And we have also learned how to interpret the ANOVA from the diagram to this table what stata is reporting. Now, in our next class we will try to understand the interval estimation portion that means the hypothesis testing to ensure that this 0 0.50 what I get here that is not out of a chance rather it is statistically different from 0. Okay? So, in our next class, we will discuss about hypothesis testing. Thank you.